Combos and kill throws, juggling and tech chasing. These are some of a smasher's favorite things. Now what no one likes is getting comboed, juggled, tech chased, or killed. It's time to talk about disadvantage, one of the less liked but more important parts of the game. For a quick primer, disadvantage is the moment when you're put on the back foot. It's when your options are limited and you have to be careful about the options you pick because if you pick wrong, you'll get hit again and again and again. The most obvious examples are when you're hanging onto the ledge, knocked off stage, or thrown into the air. But disadvantage can be more than that. It can also be when your opponent knocks you onto the ground, tech or no tech, this is a dicey spot that sets up kills for a lot of characters and mind games for even more. Disadvantage can be when you're forced onto a platform as well. Since it's tricky to get off platforms in Ultimate, the player underneath them gets a slight positional advantage. When we're working on improving at Smash, we tend to lab out combos or practice movement or just try to hit someone a bunch. It makes sense we do practice those things because they're fun and pretty easy to work on, but those things just improve advantage in neutral. If you want to live forever and pull off those crazy comebacks, you gotta get better at disadvantage. So we've got 5 tips to help you do just that. And if you're looking for even more great tips and tricks that'll help you improve your game, head on over to ProGuides.com. We've got courses from the pros and life coaching sessions that'll help you get better at every part of the game. Now onto the tips. First up, master the tech. What tech you ask? The tech. In Smash, teching is what happens when you press the shield button as your character hits a solid surface. So the stage, or the top of a platform, or a wall. When you tech a hit on stage, you can either tech in place and stand straight up or tech into a roll in either direction by holding your left stick as you tech. If you're off stage and get hit into the bottom of the stage, you can buffer options out of the tech. So as you're staggering, you can input a jump or an up special. Once you're out of the hit stun, you'll immediately do that action. Teching is one of the most straightforward and simple parts of the game, but that doesn't make it easy. Lots of pros and longtime players will make it look easy, but that's because they've been teching for so many years that it's now second nature to them. At first glance, teching seems like it's all about reactions, but that's not completely true. Reacting to the hit is just one side of the coin, with the other side being knowledge. Experienced players have been knocked around so many times that they know when a hit is going to ground them, push them into a wall, or even knock them onto a platform. Most great Smash players do have good reaction times, but they also know when they need to react in the first place. And that's a big part of teching. When you know that you'll probably need to tech, your brain instantly starts paying more attention to your character model. Your brain searches your muscle memory for the last time something like this happened, and it uses all of that to react faster. So part of getting better at teching is getting that experience. Once you do, you'll find yourself living a lot longer. Edge guards become much less scary when you know you're not going to bounce off the stage. This game lets you tech hits into high percent, so you'll survive a lot of offstage punishment. And on stage, you'll live longer because so many characters can jab lock confirm you. That means when you miss a tech, they run up and hit your body with a light move, knocking you up in place, then they follow up with a smash attack, and you die. Teching and tech rolling stops that from happening. Really skilled opponents will start to read your tech options and react to that, but being able to tech means opening up those tech options in the first place. So be sure to practice teching. It can be tough, but you can do it by taking big hits in training mode. Okay, here's a simple one. Use your neutral air dodge more than your directional air dodge. Ultimate puts directional air dodging back in the game, and it's awesome and super useful. You can use directional air dodges to avoid really active hitboxes or to get back on stage. Directional air dodges feel so good and natural that it's easy to default to them. My opponent's to the left of me? Well, going right. But here's the catch. In exchange for directionality, you get lag. Directional air dodges have more end lag, meaning that after your invincibility is over, your opponent has more time to hit you before you can do anything. Neutral air dodges keep you untouchable for longer and have less lag. Some neutral air dodges have literally half the vulnerability of directional ones. Neutral air dodging can actually be a bit tricky, but not because they're hard to input, because they're easy to input. All you gotta do is air dodge without inputting a direction, but for newer players especially, this can feel counterintuitive. What do you mean I push less buttons? I'm getting hit, damn it! I gotta press all of my buttons. It sounds goofy, but when we panic, we press buttons and move the stick around. Calm down and just neutral dodge. And that leads us right into our third tip. Don't panic and start hitting random buttons. I know, I know, this tip sounds a little rude, like we're assuming you're a total fool, but listen, it's okay. We all mash buttons sometimes and get totally wrecked for it, so don't feel bad about it. But do remember this secret. The very best players are just patient. They're patient enough to sit there and not press any button but the right one. When you're in advantage, it's always easier to be patient and calm. You aren't being pressured, you're in control. But when you're getting knocked around, maybe you're getting frustrated, maybe you're getting scared, whatever it is, take a deep breath, reel it in, and remember you're gonna have control in some way. Even if it's just DI and controlling where your character goes when they get hit, when you remember that, you stop spamming the same options that get you punished and the correct options start to come into mind. This tip sounds so simple, but it's big for every level of play. And button mashing leads us into our next tip. Don't focus on counter hitting, focus on dodging. This tip is especially important for newer players. When you're in disadvantage in any fighting game, it's not your turn to hit people. This is how fighting games are balanced and how they can be as cool as they are. 
But when you're newer, you're not thinking about the game design or set play or frame data or all that nerd stuff. You're thinking about hitting people and you probably just want to smack someone around. The big part of getting better at disadvantage is reeling that in and realizing that most times it's better to just float away from opponents or watch for their next attack and air dodge. Or if you're consistently trying to hit an opponent in disadvantage, they're either going to pick a faster move and beat yours, or they're going to jump towards you and bait your move out, then hit you. Or they're just going to wait for you to land with lag, throw you in the air, and juggle you again. Sometimes you'll have counter hit opportunities, more times you'll have dodge opportunities. Here's a pop quiz. Where's the safest place to be in Smash? If you guessed at the center of the stage, then you are right. In most situations, center stage is the safest spot in Smash because you're the furthest away from the blast zones, and that makes a big difference. Plenty of moves will kill a lot earlier by the ledge than they will at center stage. Disadvantage might seem like it's all about ledge trapping, edge guarding, and follow-ups, but the true name of the game is stage control. In disadvantage, your goal should be to safely regain stage control. That means you want to try and make it back to center stage without getting hit. When you're at center stage, you've got tons of movement options and you're far away from the blast zone, so it's going to be harder for your opponent to kill you. But experienced opponents are going to know you want center stage and they're going to try and keep you from it. So when your opponents get good, you can't just float and dodge the center stage. Instead, you often have to go to the ledge. The ledge is super dangerous in the long term because it's close to the blast zone, but in the short term it gives you a few invincibility options. And if your opponent is holding the center, chances are you're going to make it to the ledge before they hit you. Then you can pick a few options and if you pick right, you can get back to the center. At a high level, stage control is one of the coolest mental games of Smash. Do I go off stage to edge guard and risk losing stage control? If I run over to the ledge to trap them, will they just go to a platform or to center stage? Will they try to roll past me to get to center stage and stay safe in the long term or roll away from me to stay safe in the short term? When you start to learn more about disadvantage, neutral, and advantage, you start to understand how much more depth there is to the mental game of Smash. And that's a bonus, not just as a player, but as a viewer. Even as you watch others play Smash, you can see the button presses come together, not just as mashing random good moves, but as steps to a larger game plan. But before you get there yourself, you gotta stop getting hit. And in case you need a refresher, to do that, you should 1. Master the tech 2. Neutral air dodge more than the directional air dodge 3. Don't panic and mash buttons 4. Focus on dodging and getting to safety more than counter hitting and 5. Keep stage control in mind Oh wait, and one final sixth point Subscribing to this channel no, actually, doing that has been proven to get you better at Smash. You get our videos sent to you, you watch them, and you improve. Take our word for it, you'll never regret it.